Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this really fun fall themed tumbler. With fall officially here, I figured this was a really neat concept to show you guys. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's wake up prep those tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. Now I am using a 20 ounce skinny for this project today, but you can obviously use any type of tumbler you already have on hand. Now I didn't paint it yet because I wanted to show you guys the paints. I'm going to be priming my tumbler with this beautiful brown that I got through christytaylorcreations.com. I'll make sure to attach that down below as well. But I know it's starting to get pretty chilly out other places, so I thought it'd be nice to show you guys that you don't have to use spray paint. You can also use paints as well to prime your tumblers. Now this is for the leopard spot base that we will be doing. I like to apply my glitters with the Mod Podge method when I do my leopard spots. It's just the way that I like to do it. But if you like to use the epoxy method, you can go ahead and do that first before you add your spots. It's completely up to you. Now typically people like to use a champagne colored metallic glitter for their base, but I actually like to use, I have a glitter called Agenda, which I'll be using, and it is kind of like a cheat glitter. So once it goes on, it's going to actually take on the color of the base that I have here. And I thought, I just really liked the way it looked better than the champagne metallic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load that glitter on really good. I'm gonna set that off to the side and let that glue dry. And once that glue has dried, I'm going to go ahead and take my tumbler here and I'm going to sweep off any extra little glitters that might not have gotten in, down into the glue. And as you guys can see, that glitter kind of took on a golden, already took on a golden champagne color all on its own because of the base that we used. And the reason why I like to sweep my tumblers off with all those extra little glitters is it just really helps out whenever you go to apply your spots, your brush doesn't get all gunked up with any little specks of glitter in it. Now to achieve the spots on this tumbler, I'm going to be using suede, which is a metallic brown, and I'll also be using black diamond, which is kind of a smaller, chunky black glitter. And to make my spots, I have my most favorite chip brush ever. I use it for everything from wood grains to my leopard spots because I like more of a bigger, more exaggerated leopard spot than usual. So that's why I like to use this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit more Mod Podge. I have it right there in my tray. I'm just gonna load up my brush really good with my Mod Podge and I'm just going to do a dabbing motion, making my first spot here. Now I like to start at the bottom because I like to kind of wrap my spots around the bottom to kind of make sure everything looks cohesive and all together. But as you can see, my spots are not perfect. There are little dabbles of that glue kind of outside of where the spot should be. And they're kind of misshaped. They're not perfect circles. They're oblong in a way. And I just kind of make sure, I do about three of them around the bottom. And then I just kind of off center them all the way up as I go. But I like to do three at a time. And then I go ahead and I get my first layer of glitter on. I'm gonna go ahead and use my brown glitter, which is called suede. And then we'll move on to the other spots. Now as I move forward here, like I said, I kind of off center them as I go up and I just want to make sure that I leave enough room because you got to think about the black outer ring that's going to go on them as well. So you want to make sure that you leave enough room to be able to apply that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up these spots here. I'm going to go ahead and apply my suede. I'm going to clean up my area really well and then we'll, we're going to move straight forward right into the black outer ring on the outside of these spots. Now you did hear me correctly. I don't wait for these spots to dry. I go ahead and move forward right onto this next step. So how I'm going to apply my black diamond glitter is with a black paint. You can use any type of black paint you have on hand. This is also from Christy Taylor Creations as well. But again, you can use any type of acrylic paints to achieve this. So the whole point of this is that it, you don't want it to look perfect. Because if you, if you look at leopards in the wild, their spots aren't perfect. So it's okay to kind of 
dip in and out and I just kind of let those spots speak to me and tell me where they would like their black outer ring to be and some are a little thicker some kind of go way outside of it I kind of just make sure that I form it all myself and just just let it kind of speak to me as I go but for the most part, this is more of a visual thing for me. It might not look exactly like a leopard spot. It might be combined with other animals as well, <laughs> but it's more of a visual thing for me. I really like how these turn out and I hope that you guys enjoy how yours turn out as well. All right, I went ahead and did up most of these spots here. I'm just gonna kind of finish this up as I go. Now, I'm not too worried about any of those loose glitters that are on or in between the spots there, that's completely fine. Those will completely be swept away once this is fully dried. Now again, what I'm about to do is more of a visual thing for me, and it's completely optional. You don't have to do it, but I like to add these little, little half like C looking, almost like a V, not maybe not a C, more like a V. <laughs> and they do kind of look like little hearts too, but it's more of a V shaped but I just kind of add these little spots in between just kind of fill in and give a little bit more character but again that's completely optional all right our first layer here is all dry and now we're going to come through and I just have another chip brush that I like to use to sweep all my glitters off and we're going to sweep it down really really well but this is a really big important step that you need to make sure that you guys do. Not only is it gonna clean up your tumbler and make it have those spot, those nice clean spots like you'd like, but this is also going to remove any of those glitters that just aren't stuck down in the paint and the glue. And that is really gonna help out when we go to epoxy our tumblers. Now that I have it all swept off, I'm gonna go take it outside and I'm gonna give it a couple coats of this uh, two times ultra cover. That is extremely important. You wanna make sure that you spray this down really good and that really helps those glitters stay in place and not smudge around when you apply your epoxy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my epoxy right onto my raw glitter here. I'm gonna make sure that I hit it up really good with my torch. That torch is really gonna help any little micro bubbles that might be up underneath all those little glitters when you go to apply it. So make sure you use your torch, let it dry overnight, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Now here it is the next morning. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up my rim really good. I just like to do that in between every single coat of epoxy. It just really helps out in the end. I'm also going to give it a really good sanding. I'm not going to go too heavy with the sanding because we did use a little bit of metallics in there. I just want to kind of break down any points that might be poking out of my epoxy. Now sometimes that first coat right over the raw glitter can still be a bit lumpy. So if you feel like you need to add another coat of epoxy, go ahead and do that. I felt mine was okay to go ahead and move forward onto my stripes. It wasn't lumpy at all, it was nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my stripes. But again, if you need to add another layer, go ahead and do it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add our stripes. I have my tumbler here all ready to go, and I'm actually gonna be doing kind of a crackle look with my stripes, so I'm actually gonna be using Elmer's glue to achieve the crackle look and the stripes. I'm also gonna be using a pretty teal paint, and I'll also be kind of be sprinkling a little bit of glitter on top of that wet paint as well, and I'm just gonna use Gulf Coast here that is also through my glitter shop. Now to apply the stripes, I am just gonna use a basic electrical tape. I really like how stretchy it is. It's almost like vinyl in a way. <laughs> so it really forms around those tumblers nicely when you go to do your stripes. So I'm just gonna get my first stripe here on the bottom. I'm just gonna follow just a little bit up from the bottom there. I'm just gonna do it all the way around. But the reason why I'm adding the tape right here first is because I do want the bottom of my tumbler to have that crackle blue look and just having a little bit of that leopard peeking through. So that's why I went ahead and started my line right here today. Now to make sure that my stripes are the same distance apart, I'm going to actually take a little piece of my electrical tape and use it as a guide for my tape as I go. Now I only did one little piece on the front, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can go ahead and apply a couple more other little pieces around it as well, or use one whole piece of tape too, just so that way you guys know that your stripes are even, as even as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do up the rest of my stripes here. 
just repeating like I did earlier, putting in a little piece of tape, putting my stripe on and continuing up. And I did about four pieces of these tape all the way up my tumbler. Now you could obviously go completely up your tumbler if you'd like to, but I just kind of wanted a half look with it today, but going all the way up would be very pretty as well. But wherever your imagination takes you, I know that you guys got this. All right, I have my tape all applied here. Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding our glue. Now that is just a basic white school glue, Elmer school glue that you can get from anywhere. Well, sometimes it's even on sale. I think I got mine for like 10 cents because it was in one of my kids' uh, school bags. So I just used that. So <laughs> you just want to do kind of a thin layer. I just kind of put a glob on there and I'm just going to go around. Now, just like any type of medium, the thicker it is, the more of a crackle, the thinner it is, the smaller of a crackle. So it's completely up to you on how you'd like to apply this, but it is so simple. This is all you want to do is you just want to apply it. Then I'm going to take my blow dryer after I get it all applied here. I'm going to start to dry it because you don't want to fully dry before you add your paint because that's the whole, as it dries, that's what gives it the crackle. So you don't want it completely dry. You just want it to get it to that state where it starts to get a little tacky. After I was done smoothing it out, as you can see here, I took my blow dryer and I just got it to the point where it's not fully dry, like I talked about earlier. You can see that there's still a bunch of white left on it and that's exactly what you want. Now, as I apply my paint, not only am I gonna try to do one swipe only over this, not to disturb the crackle look that I'm after, I'm also going to sprinkle some of my Gulf Coast glitter right on top of it as well as I go. So all I'm gonna do is take my paintbrush, try to do one motion with my paint as as best as i can make sure that i sprinkle a little bit of my glitter on there as well as i go and just finish it up down my tumbler now as soon as i am done applying my paint and my glitters i'm going to go ahead and remove my electrical tape right after i am done here but I don't want you guys to fuss with this too much. It's so simple. Just swipe on the paint, sprinkle on your glitter, remove your tape, and then we're gonna hit it up one more time with our fancy hair dryer there. <laughs> But hitting it up one more time with your blow dryer is really going to make those crackles appear. But after I am done letting this fully dry after we get done here, I'm going to go ahead and give it another coating of my two times ultra just because we use some chunky glitters here and I don't want my epoxy to kind of wick away off of anything so I went ahead and sprayed it really good with my two times ultra I'm going to apply another coat of epoxy over top of this so that way when we move on to this next step we have a nice smooth surface to work with Now that that coat of epoxy has dried on our tumbler, now we get to start applying our finishing decals. So I have my decals here, which I'll, again, I'll make sure to put in the description box below where I got these. I'm just kind of visualizing where I want them to be. So that way when I go outside and I do this next step, I kind of have an idea in mind where I'd like them and about how big they are as well. And I printed my decals out right onto clear water slide paper. And if you don't know how to use water slide paper, I'll make sure to attach a little link above of a video that I made to help you guys out. But I'm going to go ahead and move outside because I want to add some more distressed look to the bottom of this tumbler. Now I'm using an off-white today. This is called White Sand and that is by Rust-Oleum. I just wanted to use an off-white. I thought it really went with the colors of the pumpkins and everything like that. But we're gonna kinda give it a bleach spray look on the bottom. Again, I'm just kind of visualizing where exactly I would like my decals. I know I want a pumpkin on the front, a pumpkin on the back, and then I want my flowers off to each side. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just very carefully kind of outlining an area for each one of those items. And I'm not too worried about any overspray because we're gonna come back through and clean it all up. But after I apply all my little spots here, I actually like to come through and I just hold the nozzle of my spray paint down very gently, which I'll show you guys here in a second. I just get it to the point where all that's happening is the paint is just kind of spitting out of the tip. I just press it and then I just let it go. 
and then I just add these little splotches all over it and when we go to clean it up that will stay and so will the bigger blotches on the tumbler. All right, I let that dry up really good and now we're back inside. Now I have my rubbing alcohol here, which is gonna just clean it up. It's not gonna remove too much. It's only gonna remove that overspray. That's not really on our tumbler. It's just more of what misted onto it. So as you can see, it cleans it up really well and all our blotches will stay whole and so will those mini little splotches that we put on there too. It will just tidy up everything in between, giving it much more cleaner look. Now I am ready to apply my decals. I'm gonna go ahead and stick those in the water. Again, if you need a little bit of help with water slide paper, I do have that link above one more time for you just to kind of go over some basics. But all you wanna do is print it out, spray it up really good with your clear coat, and then all you have to do is cut it and put it in water and apply it. That's as easy as that. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all the water is out from underneath these. You definitely don't want that. If any water is left underneath, it will make it look like it has a little white bubble under it. And that's no good. We don't want that. So just make sure that you squeegee out all the water after you apply your little decals here. Now after I'm done applying my decals, I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side and let that dry while I make up my finishing decal for the front here. Now I am going to show you guys how I made my decal. Sometimes it's nice to go ahead and just make it yourself if you already have the fonts and everything on hand. So that way whenever you apply personalization, you can kind of match the decal that you have on there already with the name on the back. Now I use two different type of two different types of font there we go <laughs> now for the fall portion i used kg do you love me and for the happy y'all i used amuba amuba i don't know it, it's spelled weird <laughs> i'm sure i'm saying that wrong but i will make sure to put it down in the description box below so that way you guys can use those fonts if you'd like to but i just got those right off of defont so after i have that all figured out there with my fonts <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and detach it. Then I'm going to highlight the happy portion here. I'm going to go ahead and weld that together. You want to make sure you weld your pieces together so that way it doesn't make any of those extra little cuts. You want it all to look very nice. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the y'all portion here so it doesn't look all squished together. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to weld that. Then I'm just going to get everything all lined up here. But I know sometimes we have a hard time trying to find decals we like and it's perfectly okay to come in here and, and make them up yourself, especially if you kind of want everything to match, if you want the personalization on the back to match, it's okay to do this, guys. You know, that that's the whole point of why we have this, so that way we can kind of go outside of the box and make up decals ourselves if we'd like to. So now this is all done. I'm just going to make sure that it's all attached or welded together if you want to make it all one thing, just like we did everything else. You just want to size it to what you want and I just use a white vinyl to apply it. I'm going to go ahead and get my, after I get that applied of course, I'm going to go ahead and get my two last finishing coats of epoxy on and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own. I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.